focus your eyes on the sister in the beautiful orange and yellow African dress. She is Brother Jose Maria's wife from episode 38, and she gives her testimony in this 39th episode. The Light from the Inside Conversations with active members of the Light of the World Church about the transformative power of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Continuing with the Footsteps of My Life series, this special collection of interviews with limited episodes includes more than 25 conversations with the Light of the World Church members that converted and persevere in their service to God in the distant region of Malabo, Equatorial Guinea, Africa. Whether shared briefly or at length, they all speak of the mercies of our Lord and His beautiful work. And most importantly, how the Light of the World Church, its doctrine, and the Apostle of Jesus Christ have impacted and changed their lives for the better. Welcome to this special collection of interviews of the Footsteps of My Life, an ongoing series here at the Light from the Inside podcast, where our guests share personal testimonies of their past and present, and how their lives have changed, thanks to the message of salvation, preached by the Apostle Nason Joaquin Garcia in the Light of the World Church. Welcome back to another episode of The Light from the Inside. I'm here with Sister Maria Coloma from Malabo, Guinea Equatorial, Africa. She has a beautiful testimony to share, and I will invite her to do that now. So, Hermana Maria, bienvenida. Este, quisiera también que nos cuenta si puede su testimonio. Eh, ¿Cómo era su vida antes de llegar al conocimiento de la iglesia? ¿Y cómo fue que el Señor la, la trajo? My life was... Brother, how can I tell you? What it was before, a disaster, because being in the world without having God, without having any hope, without having anything, my life was a disaster because when I was in the world, I didn't have hope about the salvation for my soul. And I was there because of my crimes and sins. And then when God called me uh, to the church of the Lord, and I used to practice before another church, and but through my husband, um, had mercy for me uh, through my husband. He's the one that converted before uh, in the church that we were before. My husband used to go, we used to go to another church, Valley of the Miracles, where they would have um, a prophetic school. They would have, um, according to them, they would study the Bible the Word of God, and my husband baptized there. And I, by mercy of God, he didn't allow me to baptize in those churches. And the moment that they would announce the baptism, I would always refuse and refuse, as if it was God himself not to baptize. It's as if God would tell me to wait, don't baptize there. There is an authentic apostle on earth, on his in his church, and his and his baptism has validity. And there, my husband used to go to that church, and, and he also has a title at home that they gave him. He has a at home now as a testimony, and he was telling the brothers of the Church of the Lord that in the church where he was, they gave him that title. They even chose him as a prophet to to preach to preach the word of God. And then God there himself knew that his son was looking for him and that he wanted to serve the, the true God. And that's when God touched his heart and he brought him to the light of the world. And through my husband, I before used to harden my heart 
the enemy didn't want to leave me. My, every time my husband would come and, and speak to me, sister, come and listen to the word of God, visit us, and I would always refuse and refuse. And when I would encounter the brothers, I would say, what kind of church is this? What is it that they put in their minds? I didn't know they were speaking the truth. And then when God himself touched my heart, and that's the, in, the indicated place that I, where I, you can serve me honorably. And that's when God took me from the world and brought me to his holy church through his mercy and my husband that would always talk to me about I would always invite me and invite me until God made that work in my heart and now in this moment I have three years in the church of the Lord since I've been to, in the church of the Lord I'm happy, joyous even though we're never short of tribulations, afflictions, sufferings but there, God has mercy of me and my husband and my children, and we serve firm and forward. In this moment, we are still persevering in the path of the Lord with the help of God. Okay, sister, but you told me that uh, you told me that you made your heart hard. But that your husband kept telling you, when you go to visit the light of the world, the first time you're gonna you're gonna stay there after having only visited one time. Can you talk a little bit about that? Usted no me dijo hace ratito, hermana, que hacía duro su corazón, pero que su esposo, el hermano José, le le estaba diciendo, va a ver que el día que usted visita. La primera vez se va a quedar ahí, si nos puede platicar un poquito de eso. Yes, brother, that's how it happened also. Every time that my husband would come and preach to me at home, that would speak to me about God, because my husband loved God so much, and every time that he would come out of prayer, he would come and tell me the uh, the day that you stand in the church of the Lord, that's the day they're going to stay and you're never going back. And I would say, what kind of church is this that, that's going to convince me that the first day that I stand there, I will stay there? And my husband would t always tell me, I'm telling you the truth, woman, companion of mine, the day that you stand in the light of the world, you're not going back because the word that they practice and they preach there, they never preach it anywhere else, only there. And that's how it happened. The day that my husband invited me, uh, the day of the revivals, when I would see the brothers praying and praying, and I started crying without knowing what was making me cry, I would see the brothers there as if they were suffering, a falling in, in a sentiment, and I also started to cry with them. And then, the next day, my husband said to me, come and see also, how is it that they baptized in the church of the Lord? And I went to see the baptism, and to see the baptism, and the, sis the labor sisters sent me to the front so that I can see everything that they would do at the baptisms. And after I, s I was watching, this, my spirit was moving and jumping and, and joy. And I didn't know why I was crying. And from there, um, I went. I, I went to talk to the minister that I also wanted to baptize even though I was recent in the church of the Lord and we had the minister Juan Santana and and he used to tell me that for someone to baptize they have to first listen to the word of God and word of God and believe that there's an apostle on earth an authentic apostle of the Lord and that's when he said, sister, you have to wait a moment to uh, listen, keep continue listening and be able to believe in the baptism. 
And then after about a month, when I baptized, and when the servant of God sent to the battalions, them and their wives, their companions, that day told me, the minister told me, Sister, you wanted to baptize? Now the day has come of your baptism. I, with, with happiness, joy, joy, I went and they baptized me. I baptized the 24th of November of 2019. Until this moment, by mercy of God, I am in the Church of the Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> when, when you, very beautiful sister, God pray you for sharing that. Um, when you talk about uh, battalion members and ministers that you've been able to interact with over the years, what names come to your mind? Cuando se trata, bueno, Dios le pague por compartir eso, muy, muy hermoso su testimonio. Pero cuando hablamos de los batallones o los ministros que usted ha conocido aquí en la iglesia, ¿cuáles nombres vienen a su mente? Que se acuerde usted que hayan estado aquí, ya sea en su inicio. En la noche, en la noche de la baptize, the ministers, ministers that came, brother, I'm telling you the truth, I didn't have time to take, uh, to know their names, to learn their names, because that day that they got there is the day that I baptized. But the ministers that were there before, uh, Brother Celso, Brother, Brother Juan Santana, and and Brother Juan Santana, and Brother Luis Morales. And, and how about the battalion members? Y, y de los batallones, quienes se acuerdan uh, que hayan estado aquí en años pasados? In the past years, only those battalions or that came to my baptism? Since the time uh, I have in the church, just those and others that came, they were passing to go to Gabon and going to Zimbabwe and those countries in Africa. Okay, and and how many of your, how many children of yours are in the church? Cuantos hijos suyos están en la iglesia también? Only in the church, really, there's three. There's her, she has uh, her her daughter. Uh, there's her daughter, she says she doesn't believe. She says she doesn't believe and because she doesn't believe while she fell in the world and she had that little daughter she has. And even, and even though like that, I still, her father and I, we, we tell her, we preach to her. And she says that she cannot baptize just to baptize. She doesn't believe. And the uh, two other boys are um, have baptized, and they're in the choir with me. And she is in the world still. She doesn't believe still. Yes, she's here. She comes to the church. She comes on Sundays. Uh, the days that the sentiment comes in her heart, she comes. Okay. Um, and this joy, sister, that you feel, for example, uh, we talked about uh, the Holy Supper that is going to be celebrated here for the first time. All this happiness, all this joy that, that you're feeling, it's not something you found anywhere else. Todo esta alegría, hermana, que usted hoy está dando testimonio de ello, está sintiendo. Vamos a celebrar la Santa Cena aquí por primera vez. Todo esto regocijo espiritual nunca la yo en ningún otro lado. No, no, brother. Never have I had I ever heard. Even when we were children, and my parents were uh, Roman Catholic Romans. They would uh, announce, "Oh, there's going to be a such feast." and they were going to celebrate such person and and in what i feel in the church of the lord since the, god called me to his path 
I've never felt it anywhere else. Never. It's unique. So over there, Sister Beth, Amen. Oh, that is so. Brothers online, uh, sometimes I'll read a, uh, I'll read a quote from the Apostle of the Lord or a stanza from a hymnal. Not having that with me to share with you today. What is one of the hymns that we sing that to you is one of your favorites or it, it fills your heart? Uh, allá, hermana, donde entrevisto a los hermanos vía internet, a veces les saco, uh, tengo, tengo uh, varios uh, expresiones del apóstol del Señor uh, escritos en papel. Una hermana me ha ayudado uh, a juntarlas y a veces saco uno y se los leo a los hermanos o una estrofa de una alabanza uh, y les pregunto qué ¿Qué piensan de esto que acabo de leer? Pero no teniendo eso conmigo ahorita, le preguntaría a usted, ¿cuál alabanza eh, para usted la llena mucho? Si es que puede nombrar una uh, que, que le hace como verse mucho. A lot. Like that him. As clay in your hands. Every time when I pray at home. I always sing that hymn, and the one that I owe many debts, I am deeply flawed, I always sing those hymns, when I sing them, even though I'm praying, I'm, I begin to cry, my, my spirit uh, moves, and I'm feeling the presence of God. It's overall, uh, this hymn, As Clean Your Hands. Uh, hermana, para los hermanos de allá de Estados Unidos que están sintonizándose y escuchando, ¿qué palabras les quisiera mandar usted a, los, a nuestros hermanos de allá de Estados Unidos y otras partes? Words that I would like to say to our bro my brothers from the United States and other parts, that first and foremost, I want to greet you, that I also love you, that we are one in Christ, in Christ Jesus, and I have a father in the faith, that he's a brother, Nason Joaquin Garcia, Apostle of Jesus Christ. Well, you've heard it yourself uh, from our sister Maria, how the Light of the World Church has impacted her and her family, her husband having converted first, uh, having been a prophet in another church uh, nearby. Uh, he embraced the path of the, of the Lord in the Light of the World Church and kept inviting his wife, who at the beginning she was She's, she tells that she felt uh, hard-hearted, maybe not wanting to accept it. But you heard it from her that since the first day she visited, she never went back and she, and she hasn't left. And, and she's been here ever since. Our invitation for you is to come and visit us also someday soon at a temple nearby you and experience for yourself, discover for yourself uh, the beautiful doctrine that exists here preached by an authentic apostle of Jesus Christ, whose name is Nason Joaquin Garcia, by the grace of God. Como ustedes mismos lo han escuchado, el testimonio de nuestra hermana, que desde el día que el Señor me permitió llegar, no ha rezado y aquí se ha quedado. Y así también es nuestra invitación para todos ustedes Amen. que vengan y conozcan por, por sí mismos, por Amen. ustedes mismos. Amen. Uh, esa palabra predicada por un apóstol de Jesucristo Amen. llamado Nazón oh, yes. Joaquín García, que impacta nuestras vidas, que nos cambia uh, de, una, uh, de una manera muy hermosa, que jamás queremos regresar de donde nos trajo el Señor. Amen. Con eso los dejamos y Dios les bendiga a todos. And to follow, if you want to stick around and listen, she gives her same testimony with me off camera, which was actually recorded for a separate project. 
For the glory of God, I am Sister Coloma. I have in the Church of the Lord three years. My testimony is that in the world, to come to the Church of the Lord, thanks to the mercy of God and His Holy, Apo and His Holy Apostle, through, let's say it this way, through my husband, because he's the one that converted before me. Let's just say it that way. Then my husband would talk to me and preach to me. And I remember that one day we were going to the church where we used to go to. My husband and, and my children and I, we were there with the pastor. We saw the brothers that were at the prayer and I started to laugh and I would say what kind of church is this these problems of this church and it's in just any corner it's any corner and I started to laugh and there my husband uh, going to the church where we were at he would say let's not laugh you don't know they know what they're doing and what I without knowing that it was a true church of Jesus Christ and then from there my husband had a problem that he had where they took him to jail until that day he came out and he had a small uh, what do you call those it's called braceria, a bar uh, where all the evangelists and Jehovah Witnesses and other congregations and there it would with the help of God before the family of the minister started to invite my husband and to speak with him and then it's when the pastor called the laborers that there's a soul there that I always find him praying uh, talking or or teaching other brothers there and that's when the bre the laborers got there and they started to speak to my uh, husband and they started to teach him uh, brother there's uh, on earth there's an authentic apostle of Jesus Christ and my husband didn't know any of this so he didn't accept and then there was a moment where he himself would tell me sister uh, I even wanted to offend them that how, how are you going to tell me that that there's an authentic apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ and the brothers kept coming to visit me and the sisters and then they would talk to me all the moments and there is one day where the Holy Supper came and that's when those brothers came to invite me to invite him Brother, this evening we have the Holy Supper. Would, if you would like, you can come and visit us this evening. My husband, um, he, he was with, left with his mouth open because he had never heard that word. What is a Holy Supper? And then that's when God himself touched his heart. And he, he went, what was it that they were doing? And, and he went to the prayer. And he would tell another brother, Vicente, he would say, Brother, on earth, I've never heard that this in this church there's an uh, authentic apostle. They are for the Mexicans. They have mentioned to me that there's an apostle, and I've never heard of that. That's where they convince, he convinces his brother Vicente to also go, and they started to go. But they but they going there and I was in the world in the church where we would congregate one day my husband came one month I was in the world and he was inviting me and uh, wife companion you those church they're not telling the truth there is a church where come and listen just I just tell you come and listen and you would know if you'll follow it or not and I would always harden my heart um, 
the enemy had me had had held had me. I remember one day that what church is this that you have to go every single day? That's when he told me, no, this church you go every day. And I remember another day that he came home and they went with, they went with Brother Vicente. And that's when I, I invite you, what church is this that that they're lying to you? I told him, brother. And that's when my husband said, you don't know what you're saying, woman. Come only to, to listen to the word of God. In one month, I remember the month of October, and they announced baptisms. And he went to ask for the baptism to the minister that was in that, mo that time. And then, I don't know the date, but he baptized my husband. And when he was going to baptize, he said, Woman, my wife, I invite you to come and listen and see how is it that they invoke the Holy Spirit. And I asked my husband, what is it? What is Holy Spirit? I've never heard of that. That's when my husband said, come, because this evening they are, they're going to have revivals. That's when my husband was there uh, inviting me and I was refusing. And there was a moment where he left the prayer and they came. He came with other brothers to come and invite me. And I went into my room and I covered my ears so that I wouldn't hear what they were saying. And that's when my husband said, come, I invite you. Come and listen. How? Come and see how they uh, invoke the Holy Spirit, not, in, not like in other churches. And I was one month without going when my husband would invite me and without going to the congregation where we used to go to. And at that moment, I was meditating and and I myself was thinking, well, if we were in this church, uh, what is it that has taken my husband out of there? Maybe God himself has seen that when where we are, it's not the truth in there, the true word. And now he has taken my husband and brought him to this holy path. And that's when my husband told me, go. And I and my husband always tell me, sister of mine, the day that you st st put your legs in that in the light of the world, that's the day that you're going to stay there and you're never going to return back, look back. And I would say, what kind of church is it that it's so easily that I'm going to stay there? I'm telling you the way you listen to the word of God, it's gonna, you're going to stay there. And without making this more long, that's how it happened, how my husband told me. First time that he invited me and sister, uh, come, there's revivals. And when... They, when he told me when you go don't dress in pants you have to dress honorably honestly with a, a long dress skirt and we were in the bath in the revivals and i also knelt down without knowing what was going what would they do and and i just start i would see that the brothers and everybody my husband were crying i i also I sat down and I started watching everybody and this this sentiment, this pain, this that they, my brothers uh, watching this um, made me cry. What was it that was making me cry? And I would cry and cry. And so I again, I knelt down and I started to pray more. And it's when the next day, the, 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 the revivals ended and the next day my husband told me my uh, wife tomorrow is the day of our baptism it's around seven six people baptized that day that's when my husband uh, told me that tomorrow they're going to baptize us come and see how how they baptized the people in the church of the Lord and I prepared and I went 
and I remember the sis the labor sisters took me to the brought me from the back and took me to the front so that I can see the brother that was realizing the baptisms how was he doing it and what would he say and the what questions he would give the brothers and I finished watching all this and that moment we had minister Juan Santana and I went with brother Juan and I said uh, that I wanted to baptize but he said that sister there's no more time but another occasion that we have baptisms you can you're gonna baptize yes that's when the apostle of the Lord came he sent um, some ministers and brothers um, the 24th of November of 2019 and that was the day of my baptism I was the only one that baptized that day and he sent the letter apostolic letter here in Africa in that day and that's when that that evening brother Juan told me in, in Mana Maria Polona, Sister Maria Polona, you wanted to baptize, you asked her to baptize, and you want to serve the Lord? Now is the moment, and tomorrow you will baptize. Praise the Lord. Glory to Christ. And my my spirit was jumping inside me when he was telling me with, with joy. I started to cry. When I went to tell the sisters, and the, I would see the many battalions uh, that God sent that day in Guinea Equatorial, uh, I, I baptized, and I saw the sisters. They would give me advice. They would give. They came to change my veil. They would give me hymn books. They had me there. Uh, that brother, I was there. Without any more words, I was so happy, joyous, very happy. I can, I can say it that way. Until this day, I, I am still on, persevere in the path of the Lord, even though there's afflictions, pains, sufferings, and all that. But God still has mercy, so that I can be in His path. Que no conocen la iglesia y que quisieran conocer más, que tengan esa curiosidad, ¿qué les diría a usted que podrá uno encontrar aquí en esta iglesia? Yo les diría a todos los hermanos. I would tell you to all the brothers and sisters that are still in the world that that have the encouragement to come and learn the truth because here it's where reigns and lives an authentic apostle of Jesus Christ in this church uh, we, we don't do the things of the world in this church I would recommend to come close and invite if we invite one of them come and listen to the truth come and listen to the word of God and that in the life that we have in the world the world doesn't offer us anything we we have the salvation of our souls in the Lord Jesus Christ that died for our faults for, that's why for all the ones that are in the world I tell you please brothers and sisters come close to the church the light of the world column and pillar of the truth this is what I can tell you in this moment, hereby, I want to tell the brother, the apostle of the Lord, before I want to say, give thanks to God, and that he may enhance his strength to the servant of God, that he may give him many years of life, and I give thanks to God and to the servant of God, the apostle of Jesus Christ, that thanks to him he has sent ministers, battalions in Africa and in, in Guinea Equatorial. And that w because of that, we know that there is an apostle that reigns and lives, an authentic apostle that reigns on and lives on earth. 
and we used to be dead in our sins and crimes but now that we know the truth we know that serving God we have eternal life and thanks to him directly physically oh brother I almost want to say that I don't have words since you started arriving on Friday I feel that my soul it's gonna come out of me out of my body with so much joy uh, happiness um, I'm so happy to receive you it's as if how can I say inexplicable I, I am so happy with you I am so happy to receive you here that you have come to accompany us for the Holy Supper and the Apostle has had mercy for Africa and a Guanier Equatorial to all our listeners May the Lord reward you and bless you for tuning in. The goal of these conversations is to allow you to hear firsthand directly from faithful members of the Light of the World Church how its doctrine has changed us through personal and spiritual, life-changing experiences and triumphs. God bless you all for hearing.